Welcome to the single state design portion of the protein design tutorial. Uh, before you start, it's important that you've read through this introductory section to make sure that your environment's set up. Uh, this isn't the first tutorial you've done, then you should be in, in good shape. Um, so you're going to want to navigate to your uh, single state design folder uh, within your teaching resources. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a new directory. You can call it my files or um, you know, whatever else you would like. Uh, so there are some sample input and output files that we'll be using for the tutorial, uh, but almost all of those can be generated um, just by executing the tutorial. So before we get started on the actual design portion of the tutorial, we have to do some pre-processing steps. Um, so we're going to get a kind of a native PDB, and then we're going to do a few pre-processing steps to uh, make it more usable within the Rosetta environment. So you can download the PDB directly from the RCSB, or in our case, you can just grab it from the input files folder. So we grab this PDB. Um, now we're going to run it through a clean PDB script. So this is going to be located within your Rosetta um, installation. So wherever you have Rosetta installed, it's going to be under Tools, and then Protein Tools, then Scripts, and cleanpdb.py. So we're going to give it the PDB that we want to modify, and then we're going to give it the uh, set of chains within that PDB that we're interested in, in cleaning. Uh, so in our case, that's all three chains. So now we can see that we have four new files. We have this cleaned PDB, and then we have FASTA files for each of the three chains. Um, so next, we're going to remove um, protein atoms that are that are not involved in our antibody-antigen interface. So for that, we're going to go to PyMol. Um, so I'm on a, a Windows environment, so PyMol is a little bit finicky to run um, within Ubuntu. So I've got it running over here in Windows. Uh, you can just execute PyMol with the PDB they're interested in, and then it'll open up um, to this window. So just to demonstrate kind of what that last script did, so this is the raw PDB as our cover from the RCSB. We can see that there's a number of extraneous atoms and a few extra ligands that uh, you know we're not interested in keeping around. So once we've cleaned it, those are all gone, um, and now we're going to remove the portions that are the portions of the antibody that are conserved regions and not near the, the binding interface. So for that, we create two selections within PyMol. Um, you know, you can name these anything you want, but for clarity's sake, we have them as, as heavy constant and light constant. And then we denote which of the, the residues and which chain. So we can see this is selecting atoms that are in the conserve portion, they're far away from the binding interface, uh, with a couple exceptions. So here's our uh, light constant. So now we're going to just remove those selections. And in so doing, we now have a much leaner uh, antigen-antibody complex to evaluate. So now we're going to save this. And we can now close PyMole. Uh, so for, for my purposes, the file we just saved is elsewhere in my file system, so I'm just going to grab it from the input files so we have uh, one other pre-processing step we're going to reorder and rename the chains for clarity um, so typically we denote the antigen chain as a and the heavy and light chains as h and l respectively uh, so for that we're going to once again turn to one of the included scripts we're going to do uh, 
the reorder PV chains. So this first parameter is specifying that we're reordering our chains. And then this second parameter is going to rename those chains after they've been reordered. So the reordering and renaming was successful. We can see we now have this renum PDB. Um, so now that we have our pre-processing pre -processing steps completed, we're going to prepare a res file. Um, this res file is going to tell Rosetta uh, which residues, which amino acids can be designed and which need to be held to a particular amino acid identity. Uh, so again, we're going to our included scripts, this time the define interface script. So we're saying that uh, our interface has two sides. One is the heavy and light chain, and the other is the antigen. And we're furthermore saying that the side we're going to design on is the heavy and light chain side. And we'll see the effects of this here shortly. So it's going to do some processing and generate our res file, assuming it's successful. So we have our res file. Uh, we'll go ahead and open that up, take a look at it. So here we have you know, the position of the amino acid. We have its chain that it belongs to, and then whether or not it can be modified. So this all AA code says that it, the amino acid can be uh, transformed to any of the 20 canonical amino acids, whereas this NAT AA restricts it to the, the native amino acid for that position. So the rest file looks good, and we can now go into uh, well, one final pre-processing step, which is performing a uh, repack and relax on the uh, PDB that we've generated thus far. So this is going to help relieve any minor clashes that might exist in the crystal structure uh, and typically will end up giving you uh, better results further down the pipe. So we're going to borrow two files from input, um, this relax.options and relax.command. Uh, relax.options is going to uh, have a set of options that will be passed to Rosetta. Uh, so now we would run a, an all atom constraint relax on this PDB that we've pre-processed. Uh, that takes about 90 minutes. So we're not actually going to execute the command here. Um, but you can see the, uh, the full command you need right here. Uh, because it has this ampersand, uh, you won't actually see any output on your command line terminal. It'll all be piped to this relax.out. So when this runs, your lowest energy structure is going to be this 10th this structure. So we're going to go ahead and copy that from the output directory. All right, so now we have the, the best of the structures that we generated. And now we can proceed to the actual design portion of the uh, protocol. So for that, we're going to move to um, Rosetta Scripts, which is an XML based approach to uh, designing and executing your Rosetta commands. So you can include different movers, um, like repack or relax. So again, we're going to borrow some input files. So the design.options, design.xml, and design.command. So we can look through the design.xml. Um, 
the overall structure of a Rosetta Scripts XML files is typically pretty consistent. Um, here we can see that we're doing uh, you know, two protocols. We're going to do a design stage and then an analyze stage, which is going to give us some of our the metrics that we need. Uh, we're also specifying which score function we're using uh, for the pack runners mover and this interface analyzer mover. So next we're going to generate our designed models. So for that, uh, again, you're going to navigate to your uh, Rosetta X, you know, installation and we're specifying the design.options. That's going to have um, other command line options that we would otherwise have to include in the command. And then we're going to tell it uh, the XML files where we're going to parse out our protocol. We're going to, any output files we generate, we'll have this underscore design as a suffix. And finally, we're going to store all of the scores generated to this FASTC file right here. Uh, so this will take about 10 minutes to run. So had a little snafu there. Forgot to rename our optimized PDB. So, and we can see that by this right here. So, we're going to rectify that. And then rerun this command. So while this is running, we're going to be generating a, a similar set of design models. Uh, as a control. So we're going to copy a few more files from the input files directory. And then we're going to generate our 10 control models. So this time we're going to have our underscore control as our suffix and control at C as our score file. And so now we have this running as well. So both of these are running appropriately. So while these run, we're going to skip ahead to part of the analysis portion. So we don't want to clobber the FASC files that are currently being generated. Um, so we're going to create a new folder. 
and then we're going to copy these files from the output files folder. All right, so this next portion, depending on your setup, may or may not um, produce a visible output. So if you are um, running a remote terminal that doesn't have an X server set up, it may not, um, may not work properly, uh, but we'll give it a shot. So go to our scripts, go compare design control, Specify R2. So, important note here uh, this script, these scripts only work with Python 2. Let's see if anything gets wrong. Okay, so it's not going to pull up here. Um, But we should still be able to generate the PNG files. Uh, don't worry about the warnings. So here we can see we've generated three separate graphs um, showing comparisons of the control design with um, various Rosetta metrics. So the uh, overall score, the binding energy, and the binding density. Um, so this next step, requires us to wait on this to finish. So it looks like we have finished. Uh, we have our control PDBs and our relaxed PDB, ours, our design PDBs. Um, so we've navigated back to our original file folder here, and now we're going to see if we can generate a web logo. So unfortunately that didn't work uh, within our environment, uh, but we can take a look at the um, Sigmund's logo file here in, in the output files. So this is what the um, Sigmund's logo looks like, the web logo rather. Um, basically it shows the uh, amino acids that we've modified and gives the frequency that uh, each position is or basically how likely each position um, is to choose a particular amino acid identity based on the uh, 10 models that we generated. Um, so that's about it for this single state portion of the tutorial. Um, we also have some additional reading that you can look into if you want to um, learn more about single state design and get a little bit deeper into it. Um, so these resources here on portion seven are um, worth taking a look at. So we're now gonna move into the multi-state design portion of the protein design tutorial. Uh, this is gonna use some of the files that we generated during the single state portion, and it's gonna have a fair amount of overlap with that. The primary difference is that instead of designing a single antibody against a single antigen, we're now gonna be designing an antibody against multiple antigens. Um, this is useful if you're trying to design, say, a broadly neutralizing antibody, 
uh, one that will neutralize multiple different strains of a particular virus, um, or if you are trying to uh, design against um, multiple variants of a virus that may arise from, for example, antigenic drift. Uh, so much as we did previously, um, we're going to make ourselves a new directory uh, where we can generate all of our intermediary files. And we're next going to grab the two complexes that we're going to be using during this for this tutorial. So we're going to grab the uh, 4HKX renumbered PDB that we generated during the single state design. Uh, alternatively, you can just grab it from the input files. So we'll pull that into our directory, and we're also going to pull down the um, H1 California influenza PDB um, designated 3UBQ. So again, you can grab this directly from the RCSB or you can get it from the um, input file folder. All right, so as with previously, we're going to um, clean this new PDB. We've already cleaned the um, 4HKX complex, so we don't want to worry about that. So we'll go through this pretty quickly. As before, using the clean PDB script. Using the 3PDQ. And we're interested in getting the HA1 domain of hemagglutinin. Uh, so we're only interested in getting the A chain. So whereas before we had three FASTA files, uh, and a PDB, now we just have the one, because we only wanted the, the single chain. Um, so now we effectively have to make these two antigens uh, kind of match. So to do that, we're going to go into PyMol. So once we have PyMol up with our two uh, structures, we want to uh, align the sequences. So click down here, get the sequences for our two uh, antigens, and then we're going to um, align the 3UBQ to the uh, HA chain and the 4HKX. So go down to actions, going to align, and then two molecule, and then 3UBQA. So now we can, uh, based on this, we can truncate the unused portions of the antigen. So we're specifying two contiguous portions. And then we're going to remove that truncation. So now we have um, a truncated and aligned set of uh, structures. So now, as before, we're going to uh, rename and reorder the chains. So using the same script as before, we reorder the PDB chains. And we're going to be using the same convention we did with the uh, other complex.
we now have our uh, two PDBs, and we're going to generate a res file for multi-state design. Um, so the res files are, are exactly the same. They're, they're going to specify which amino acids or which positions can uh, have their amino acids changed and which ones are restricted to um, the native amino acid. Um, so the main difference is that we need a res file for um, each of our states, which in this case is our two different antigens. So we're going to generate uh, new RAS files for both of our PDBs using the define interface script. Uh, and as before, our two sides are the same. So we have the heavy and light chain on one side with the antigen side uh, on the other. And we're going to be designing the uh, antibody side. So we'll repeat that, but for the 3 ubq complex. So now that we have our rest files generated, we're going to uh, have to do a little bit of manual editing here. So. Uh, recon's only going to work if the number of design residues specified is the same for each of the states. Um, so we're going to have to look through um, the four HKIX and three UBQ res files and delete any of the design res file or designed positions that are not present in both. So for example, um, you know, residue 30, residue 32, etc. The full list is located uh, within the tutorial. So once you've you've cleared those. Um, you should be able to check and see that the number of lines in the rest file, or the rest files rather, are the same. So I've gone ahead and removed all the extraneous positions, uh, and we can now see that we have uh, the same number of lines for both of the, the rest files. So let's save these, and then we can close our text editor. So we're going to do the same. Um, you know, repack and relax that we did for the original structure. Again, this is going to take, you know, approximately uh, 90 minutes or so, so we're not actually going to run it here in the video. Uh, we're just going to pull the appropriate uh, PDB. which in this case is number five. And we're going to rename that. So next we're actually gonna run the multi-state design. So we're going to copy Few files, let's see, multi state design. Um, so we went ahead and we got a few more files in there using a wildcard character, but you'll, you'll need the XML design XML and the uh, X part of the multi state design uh, options file as well. So again, we're going to do both a design and a control phase, uh, as in the single state portion of the tutorial. Um, these will take about five minutes per design. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna bypass the um, generation of them here and go into the analysis portion. So you'll do your 10 design and your 10 control modules. 
Um, again, structurally, this is all the same as the single state design portion. Uh, you're just, you know, the protocol that you're running is just slightly different. So as before, we're going to make a new directory for analysis, and then we're going to pull a few files out of the output files directory. So in this case, we're looking for the multi-state design SC. And the uh, 3BQ control. And the four HKX. So I'm going to those three. We're going to run our um, compare design to control. It's a similar script to what we had in the single state design. So again, this is uh, going to be generating files, uh, but because I'm of my environment, it's not uh, you know, immediately demonstrating or showing showing them to us. So uh, now we'll run the same for the other complex. And so as before, we can see we have um, our three graphs for each of these. So we have the uh, score, the binding energy, and the binding density for both. And as before, we can also generate a sequence logo or a web logo. So you'll notice that this web logo looks very similar to the one we generated in the single state design. Uh, that's because we're, even though we're generating this multi-state design on two separate complexes, the amino or the ant antibody side of the complex is identical in both cases. So we only have to generate the uh, the single web logo. Um, so that concludes the multi-state design portion. Um, again, there's some additional reading. Uh, especially on the kind of the bones of the recon multi-state design algorithm. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them to the Discord, and we'll do our best to uh, help you through any issues you might have.